Julie Feifan Balzer, your host for Make It Artsy. Let's just kick back and party today. Mixed media artist Kat Kerr gets things started with the first layer of her stamped pendant. Hi, Kat. Hi, Julie. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure because you brought some amazing jewelry. Thank you. So many layers here. And you said that this is going to be quick, easy, and we Super are going to rock it out. Super easy. Well, let's get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, first have a bezel. I'm going to put some uh, clay in the bezel. So I'm just going to roll out some clay. And this is just a polymer clay. And I know that you is. said that I'm going to have to help you with mixing of the resin. Right. Absolutely. That's what we're going to do. Um, and, and the reason you're going to help me is because it takes about two minutes um, for you to mix it and you want to let it sit um, for um, for a little bit so we're just going to take two equal parts of the resin you know what I think is interesting as I was going to say I've seen other people do the resin and they have little like measuring cups but you're just right. using regular plastic cups you know you can use whichever you know whatever you have on hand as long as you are using um, two equal parts okay well, this actually makes it so easier because I always thought I would gonna have to buy all those tiny little measuring cups but now yes. I'm just gonna throw these into you're gonna, one cup that's and mix right them. and just mix okay. them up for me that would be wonderful I'm glad that you trust me. So I'm going to go ahead and just roll out this clay and get it ready to put in the bezel. And a lot of times I like to actually um, put the bezel on top of the clay and just press it in there. And that way I can remove it and just, um, you know, I'm going to use that roller to just get rid of all the excess. Is there a reason you're using pink or it really doesn't matter? It really doesn't matter because the next step we're going to use some metallic powders and okay. that's going to cover up um, all the clay that you're using. Using. So I'm going to move that out of the way and then I'm going to grab some um, a stamp here and I did add some baby powder to the stamp. So it wouldn't it's just stick. so it wouldn't stick to it, right. Do you have any tips on the kinds of stamps that work best when you're trying to stamp into clay? It, like, does it have to be deep? Can it be a fine design? You know, it, you know, I do like to use ones that are deep. In this particular case, the bezel's pretty small. So I want a uh, stamp that has quite a bit of detail in it um, because I want to be able to see it. And so I just added some um, design to it and then I'll go ahead and just add some metallic powder to it and I'm just going to brush it on. It really covers up all of that. You dab it on it first as opposed to just sort of smushing it around at the very beginning. Right, right. And that's just, you know, it really covers up um, all the, all I the clay. I was going to say, you could have used any color now. It's any color. Hidden. It's completely gone. So this is great actually for leftovers from other projects Absolutely, or anything like yeah. that. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and so normally what, the reason I like using the oven baked clay is because at this point you're going to go ahead and put it in a designated toaster oven that you mm -hmm. use for polymer clay and um, you know follow the directions for the clay and then when it's when it's already cooked it's going to come out like this and the metallic powder is already stuck to the clay and it's permanently in that bezel that's right it's not going to come off and so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually use some of that resin so that you've you go. been mixing here it is and I'm going to steal a baby wipe from my okay. hands and I don't like to actually pour the resin. I like to take it slow and just kind of add some with the popsicle stick. And this really gives me a little bit of um, control, control. I was going to say that's with smart. that resin because otherwise I do. You know, I have the chance of it kind of spilling over. Are you filling it all the way to the very top of the bezel? Um, yeah. Yes, I am. And so I want to I wanna add some dimension to this piece. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and take a little bit of glitter and just sprinkle it on. You don't need a lot, just a tiny so interesting. bit. interesting. You're using silver glitter even though you have gold underneath. Mixing sure. Your metals. Why not? Why not? And I also have this really nice little star confetti that I like to add. So cute. And I'll just let that cure and, you know, put it aside for now because I do have one that's already... Um, Ready to are go. Are we talking like 24 hours? Are we talking like? Yeah, I mean, I like to I like to ha um, let it cure for at least eight to ten hours. Okay. okay. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, add some embossing to the top of this. And I'm just using a watermark ink, a smaller stamp this time around. And if people aren't familiar with watermark ink, it can be confusing because it's clear. You don't ink see and it. You don't see it, but it's super sticky. Yes. And so it holds that embossing. Powder. That's right. And so I'm just going to bring this little piece of paper over to catch my embossing. Because of course you don't want to waste your embossing powder because right. you're going to pour a ton of excess on, yeah. you know. 
And, uh, you know, I'm not okay, being I've too never seen about anybody them. emboss on top of resin. It doesn't hurt the resin. It doesn't because it's really fast. So it's not going to hurt it in any way. And I was just going to say, don't worry about being too neat about it because when it melts, it really just gives it a nice look. So don't, even if you get some of the powder over it, don't worry about it. So if you can put that away for me and I'll go ahead and turn on the heat gun. And then we're just going, you could still see the background, yeah. but I'm gonna go ahead. And by the way, when you brought the heat gun out, of course it blew away so much of the right, excess right. embossing powder. And for people who don't know what embossing powder is, it's little tiny particles of plastic essentially, which when you melt them, they rebond back together. And we can see that melting happening like right there. Magic. It's like magic. It just goes across. And now again, right. you're continuing that silver theme. So I see how you've got gold and silver right. all together. Right, I love it. It's a, it's a nice combination. And so now at this point, we'll go ahead and add one more layer of resin. Well, we still have one more to go. But I was going to say, does it? Are you worried about like letting it cool or anything before you add that no, resin? No, I just, throw just it go on ahead there? and add it on. Wow, you know, I guess I always thought that you had to be more careful, for lack of a better term. But you're just sort of like, nope, it's all okay. It's Do all whatever good. You want. Why not? I mean. You know, I love give that. It a try. This gives me so much freedom. I feel like I could play now and not worry that I'm doing it wrong. Absolutely. And so I just added that other layer of resin and I would let it cure. And so this one's already cured and I'm going to take it up even more. I'm going to go ahead and add a rub on. Oh, I and thought that was a piece of paper out of like a book. No, it's a rub on word. So mm. we'll go ahead and just add it on there. And I'm just using a little stylus. To add that text on there. Just to add the text that is super on there. Cool. And, and of course, if you wanted, you could add it with a little like piece of book text or something sure, like that. Sure, absolutely. You know, I um, can get that. And certainly, off. I was going to say fingers are not only great tweezers. Sometimes we're going to. I better. know, I know, but it, I got it off there. You did. And I'm going to add even more with this metallic wax, and this is great. You just, I'm just going to. Put it on the sides oh, wow. there. And this is really waxy. I was say, super creamy. Yes, actually. very creamy. And so I like to kind of add some decorative design to it with just a little awl. I was just and saying, I'll is that a scrape screwdriver? that. <laughs> no, I'll scrape the, the metallic wax. And you can certainly use, you know, a bamboo skewer, a toothpick, mm -hmm. anything, anything like that. Anything. And that's not going to scratch the resin. No, it's not. I mean, you can always. Um, really get it in there and scratch right. it if you want to. But I'm adding just some final um, little star confetti on there, How do you, one final layer of resin. And so will you pour that final layer of resin for us? Because do these sure. float around when you pour it? You know, normally what I do is I'll go ahead and pour the resin uh -huh. and then add the confetti. Oh. So that and way wait, it gives is, me the... Uh, my next question is it's so domed, it yes. doesn't, but it doesn't flow off the edges. Because I'm using the popsicle stick. A lot of people like to pour. Yeah. I think you have no control when you're pouring. This, it takes a a little bit more time, but I think it's worth it. So I'll just go ahead and add that confetti and let it oh, cure wow. and you're and good to go. Let's look back at the finished pieces and I can see how detailed that layering is. You have really made some resin layering easy for me. Thank oh, you, Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited me. to make something of my own.